That uh, movie wasn't clear about, and I don't recall, is w- was he an impressive theoretical physicist? Did he publish major papers? Because he's most famous as an administrator, right? He's basically yeah. a, a really successful administrator. But like within the game of physics, what was his status? He clearly wasn't an Einstein. He probably wasn't a Robbie. W- w- right. Where did he situate himself? Yeah, no, no, great question. And I should have the qualification here that I am a historian, not a physicist. So I'm mostly answering your question with appeals to who I've, who I've talked to, what I've read. Is that very good, but not great? Right. Um, that, you know, he was really, really smart and really, really a quick thinker, but was perhaps a little bit too broad in his thinking and didn't have the either ability or desire to follow through on some of his ideas to the logical conclusions. Like, so for example, my understanding, and again, not a physicist, is that some of the work he does eventually leads to Nobel Prize winning work in the discovery of black holes. But he doesn't do that himself. He starts it on the way and then does other things. You know, and I think he's also really conscious of the fact that he is, as there's a physicist and historian, Jeremy Bernstein, who has an article centered on Oppenheimer called The Merely Very Good, right? In which he suggests that not only was Oppenheimer merely very good, but that he knew that and it sort of killed him, right? That he really was conscious of the fact that he was just, just below the best. Got it. That, that, that. That's my my sense of him as well. Um, and can yeah. we talk for a moment about those radical politics? You said it was very common. So I imagine in the 30s, Berkeley and Caltech were still relatively non-Jewish spaces. Um, so how did he navigate those like hyper elite institutions um, or really emergent institutions? The West Coast is different than the East Coast still in the in the 30s, especially. It's not the same thing. Um, and then what were what were the radical political organizations that he actually participated in? And how did he come to them? Right. So interesting. So I actually I don't know a lot about how the um the Judaism played into those initial appointments in those initial years. Um, I do think it was probably easier to break into that circle on the West Coast than the East. Um, there is, um, there is, there is a, um, a story that circulates in Oppenheimer biographies that I don't know if it's apocryphal or not, but is where Oppenheimer said that even after World War II, when Berkeley is trying to, um, when many universities are trying to recruit Manhattan Project faculty to join their staff, um, where there is some resistance to adding more Jewish faculty because with Oppenheimer, quote, one, I don't know if the quote, but like one Jewish faculty member was enough, right? So that was certainly, and again, Oppenheimer said he doesn't know if that was true, right? But there, so, so that, that, that's apocryphal, but I cited as just confirmation of your suggestion that the issue of,